Thank you very much. Everybody hear me? Yeah, it sounds like it's on. Okay, great. Green light is telling me the truth. Uh, yeah, so I'm Dan Wilson, here to talk about the Web Animations API. We're gonna talk about general web animation as well, but kind of geared towards how web animation works in 2019 according to browsers and specs and kind of what's provided by default from, a, from the browsers these days. Um, yeah, with that. Um, you know, uh, animation is not a new concept and it's not even a new concept on the web by any means. Um, we've been doing this for, for years at this point and all the way from things like just doing a set timeout or a set interval and changing the position of something on a screen. Um, jQuery Animate, where I think a lot of people first were introduced to animation where you provide kind of a starting point and then where you want it to go and the browser or the library jQuery would take care of the in-betweens. Um, request Animation Frame, which kind of improved what you get out of set interval um, by giving, being smarter about it and being more efficient. Um, there's canvas elements that you can actually uh, draw upon and, and clear out and do a lot of things in there, WebGL, and you know, in, in a related way, building on a lot of um, graphics technology. Uh, there's CSS, uh, the one of, I guess the reason that I'm even here talking about this kind of stuff is because of what CSS provided, you know, starting 12 years ago, where we were, the doors were kind of opened up on taking a starting state and an end state and doing some interesting things in between and letting the browser do the brunt of the work. Um, kind of that's what, that's what we got with CSS in the declarative way. And SVG animation where, again, we're kind of inside of a DOM, but we're able to animate these um, illustrations and all of these um, um, kind of things that help us with telling stories and, and, and there's a lot of ways to do that as well. Uh, and then there's finally libraries that build on whatever foundations the browsers provide, uh, like Greensock, uh, GSAP is a, is a popular one. There's anime, velo velocity, a, a, not a billion, that would be hyperbole, but there's a lot of them. And, um, and they make it easier for people to get in there and, and work with them. But you're including libraries, you're adding weight to your pages, um, and there's, there's limitations. If you don't have a solid foundation from the browser, um, you know, these libraries can't innovate as, as much as they could as, um, without that nice solid foundation. Um, so we, lots of options. What we're gonna be focusing on today are ones that are tied to um, HTML elements or SVG elements, things that are tied to what you get in the DOM. Um, so you've got a paragraph of text or you've got a title or an image and moving it, affecting it in some way that it's animating on a screen kind of focusing on the, the ways that we do that today and the ways that we're going to be able to do that in the future. So there's a new specification, and when I say new, it's obviously not new. It's been evolving since about 2013, um, but it's at a point where it's actually been implemented by the majority of browsers. It's, um, it's unifying the way that SVG animation works through Smile it's taking what CSS animation has provided and it's taking the strengths of JavaScript where you've got more um, dynamic options and trying to unite all of them uh, with the same underlying engine. So if you've got something that works well in CSS um, today, with the, the help of the web animation spec and the web animations API, that's now being exposed whether you're working in SVG or CSS or JavaScript. And so this is very exciting, as y'all, I, I know y'all are just enwrapped and like this is, this is wonderful. Yet another thing to, to add to our plate. But the difference here is that this really is not a new thing, it's taking what works across the board and uniting them. Um, CSS is the thing that uh, gave us off main thread uh, and compositor layer. Uh, Efficiencies. So, you know, the terms like hardware accelerated have come out of this. Um, well, you know, that's technically iffy. Um, the fact that it's working off the main thread, it's not being affected by um, um, the way that your page is working, it's not being affected by JavaScript that's slowing things up. It, it, it's able to work on its own layer. Um, and that was kind of the key benefit that CSS gave us. Um, 
but uh, JavaScript gives us dynamic values. CSS does too now with custom properties, but let's just say um, you, know, you, you have a lot of flexibility with a programming language like JavaScript um, to, to, um, to make a lot of um, randomized, dynamic uh, animations. And for the first time now, um, something that CSS animation didn't give us out of the box are actual controls to um, seek inside of an animation, to jump to a certain point in an animation, to restart it quickly, um, and, and a concept of a timeline, which is something that GreenSock and other libraries um, lean on heavily. And if you did flash work in the, back in the day, like uh, these concept of timelines, um, keeping everything in sync and being able to move along that timeline for one animation or multiple animations is kind of integral for um, making everything look right and be in sync. So um, got a lot of this and we got callbacks. So uh, event listeners that you can join for um, kind of when an animation finishes, when it's canceled, when it, um, well, it's really those two. But um, CSS also has, um, has that as well. So it, it, you can see how different things that worked well in one thing is now coming to CSS, things that worked well in CSS going through JS. SVG is kind of like the, the next thing. Like they were focusing more on getting CSS and JavaScript across the board, but we'll see that some of the things that SVG has worked well over the years is coming as well. So um, I forgot to say at the beginning that we're not really talking about the why to animate today. There's lots of things you can get into, psychological benefits and um, um, other reasons why you might want to animate, but today, at this developer conference, we're gonna be focusing on the, the how and the what. Um, there's lots of resources that, um, and you could fill more than enough um, in one talk or a conference full of talks of why to animate. Um, so just for today, we're gonna to do some code, we're going to look at examples, and we're going to see things move on the screen. So if things moving on a screen is something that um, is not a good thing for you, that is, that is something that we are gonna be doing today, just um, as an FYI. So, um, I mentioned that compositor layer. Um, whenever you have elements on a page, they get laid out. They go through uh, repaint, they go through reflow as you adjust things. Um, but if it's on promoted to this compositor layer, it kind of effectively sits above your document. So, um, the concept is kind of like a uh, traditional cell animation where uh, in, a, in a Bugs Bunny cartoon they've got a fixed background and they don't reanimate that, they don't draw that background all the time. They just draw the character that's gonna be moving um, and they layer on a transparency and they draw on that cell to, to, to do the thing that's animating. It's the same concept, it's a similar concept with web animation where you actually promote uh, an item up to a layer. So a transform or an opacity is something that can exist in this layer without affecting everything around it. If you scale something up with a transform to be twice as big as it was, it doesn't affect everything around it. It gets to live in its own space. Um, and that's beneficial when we want to get things that work fast and, and without a lot of um, stuttering. So before we dig into kind of what's going in here, I, I'm not sure how many people are familiar with CSS animation, and maybe we'll do one of those show of hand things. Um, if people are familiar with kind of how CSS animation works. Okay, so a decent amount, but, um, um, and then there's, um, you'll probably see a lot of parallels as we start talking about JavaScript today um, to what you might be familiar with CSS. Hopefully you'll see some things that are new as well that you, you may not know exist. Um, but we'll, today we'll talk about um, especially this unifying platform with the JavaScript uh, API that it's actually available today with the foundational uh, kind of core support in Firefox, in Chrome, in Opera, um, anything that's Blink based um, like Chrome and Opera. Safari is very close in that it's been very close for a, a while it's in tech preview, it's um, behind a flag. If you go into your um, iPhone or on, on, on a Mac, you can actually enable it, but it's off by default. Um, it will 
be one day promoted to full thing, but it's um, not sure when. Uh, and Edge, it's not an Edge, but Edge is gonna be Blink soon, so it'll be there soon as well. Um, meaning, like, this is actually a time where we can talk about this in actual use, not just hypothetical and let's, let's explore it. It's, it. We've kind of gone past that, let's, let's learn about it, let's explore, let's see what's possible, let's, let's actually build things with it. Um, and um, I, I will be posting these links later, um, or the, these slides later, and there's links to articles along the way. Um, you know, the, the thing that Chrome and Firefox both did, and um, presumably Safari as well, is that it's the same underlying engine, whether you decide to animate through CSS or through JavaScript. Um, they all get treated the same behind the scenes. It's all using the same underlying um, logic and technology. There's a polyfill available as well. If you can't wait for Safari, it's probably not your best option because it hasn't been updated in a, in a while. So, but it's out there just in case. So, I said that we would be talking about the what and the how, so we'll get into a little bit of the what and the how. Um, this is JavaScript, and I can get an element, and all elements now have a function that you can call on it called animate. Um, it takes two properties, two parameters. Um, what you wanna animate it from, or, or like what your frames are gonna be, so your, your states. And then the second are your timing options of um, how long it should be, how many times you want it to run, do you want it to go always forward or do you want it to reverse and alternate, um, do you want it to stay at that state when it ends, that's what fill does, or you know, um, both ways. Uh, do you want it to have a delay before it starts? Do you want it to have an end delay before it starts? That's something that's new to JavaScript and um, not in CSS at the moment. Um, and, and a different easing, which in CSS world is a timing function. How it moves uh, according to time. And so using this code right here, I can make this animation of this dot. So we're already getting into the visual stuff, so it's exciting. Um, but it's not just a start, uh, start state and an end state, you actually can specify the intermediary things as well. So this is one where it's more of a pulse and it does different things. Um, you can do multiple properties in a, in a given animation. You know, I can affect my transform and I can affect my opacity and I can affect it at different times. So I can say that I want this um, frame to happen at zero, meaning at the start, or one, meaning the end, and anywhere in between. Um, going on, and of course can set any of my other timing options as an object with duration in milliseconds, iterations, direction, fill. Um, so if we take a look at this, where we've got transforms and opacities, different keyframes and timing options, and if you are familiar with CSS, or if you're not, I'm gonna show you what it looks like because it's actually very familiar um, to how we would describe a CSS animation. We've got keyframes, um, at the same kind of intervals, same properties going on, and then setting an animation in CSS with um, a timing and easing, delays, iterations, and the other properties. Um, so you might be wondering with all of this, you know, if, if we've already got one way to do it, why are we even talking about this at all? Uh, I wanna talk JavaScript, let's, let's dig into some real JavaScript stuff and not this CSS stuff. Uh, well, I mean, CSS is great. <laughs> um, CSS has been doing a lot of um, cool things in here and um, now we're letting us do it in a new way. Um, so JavaScript didn't have an efficient way to do animation um, natively from the browser where the browser takes on and does all the calculations for you. Uh, now it does. So we get the benefits of CSS, like that compositor layer um, but we also get what JavaScript does best. You know, we have access to variables. It's not just a uh, declarative in CSS anymore. It's, well, you can get finer control. You can really uh, manipulate the timing and everything. And those player controls that um, I alluded to earlier. Um, and so let's talk about some of those um, options that you can perform on an animation once you have it. So let's say that you did something similar as before where you got that element.animate 
and you can call a play state on it, and you can see if it's running or not. You can see if it's um, paused, or if it's idle, or if it finished. Um, and you also have methods that you can call to change that state. So if you want to pause it, you can call pause and then run that, check the animation.play state, and you'll get back a string saying that it's paused. So already you've got some, some hookins there that you can um, affect other parts of your website or application based on these states. Um, and so here's one example um, of a, a kind of a thingy walking with some circles. And you know, so I can pause the head animation or pause the left hand. Uh, and I can uh, unpause and then, you know, it'll play back again. So we're easing into it, just some, some, some basic commands that you get access to. Um, there's a timeline that I mentioned. Um, there's this uh, property called current time that is read and write. So if you want to see how far along in your animation you are at any given point, you can call uh, animation.currentTime, or you can set it. So if you set it to 200, then you can jump to the 200 millisecond point in the animation. Um, so, you know, you, one example of what you can do with that is you've got these two animations down here that are not in sync, and I can press this button, capture the current time of the first one, set the current time of the second one, and all of a sudden they are now in sync without affecting that uh, initial animation. So. Um, randomize it again and then sync them together and um, you know these are basic examples but they're we're laying a foundation of options that we have that we can build up to some more impressive kind of technologies or options as we deal with animation um, and there's lots of considerations about current time it's the max value is kind of the delay plus the duration times the iterations, plus the end delay if you've specified one. We've also got the concept of a playback rate. So it's no longer just, I want this animation to run 700 milliseconds. I can say I want it to run 700 milliseconds, but I want it to run twice as fast. So I can set playback rate equals two, and it'll go twice as fast. I can set it to 0.25, and it'll go one fourth the speed. Um, and so over here, I've got these buttons over here that um, effectively will make everything go twice as fast. So on that left hand, it's now going twice as fast as the right hand. Or now they're both going twice as fast as everything else. And when it's paused here on the head, I can change and seek. So that's showing the options with the current time on this slider, um, where I can jump around in the animation while it's paused. Um, so another example of a playback rate, this one's going to spin, just FYI. Um, something in here, and I don't know what this is going to look like with the frame rate on a projector, but it starts at a playback rate of zero, and I can increase that playback rate ever so slowly, and all of a sudden we've got something that is, eh, that actually works pretty well, an optical illusion where like actually it looks like I've got four circles. Um, in there, and then of course I can just slow that down, and and the playback rate is um, gives us a lot of power actually to to modify this. I've used that in games, and actually I'll show another example in a, in a second where um, as the game pro progresses, you can imagine maybe something happens a little faster. It's a puzzle game, and blocks fall a little faster in Tetris or something like that. You can keep all your animations the same. You just affect the playback rate and slowly increase it as the difficulty increases. Um, events. So we have events in CSS as well where you can actually do uh, do something inside of JavaScript when on and add an event listener for an animation end or an animation cancel or a transition end or an animation start. We've got the same kind of concept here in JavaScript where we've got an on finish and an on cancel. 
there's also promises that are, are coming, but the callbacks are the, um, the ones that are implemented right now uh, across the board. Um, and so one of the key things that we get here is that we can sequence our animations together. Um, so let's go over here. Let's refresh this. I know we're in Oklahoma, but um, if you any, know anything about Texas, you'll know that we got here. So this is a, a sing-along thing. Um, I don't know if the red is showing up of the state of Texas there. Um, each arc is its own animation. And because um, we're inside of JavaScript, on that animation end of that arc from the to stars, um, we check the current position of stars, we check the current position of at, we say that we want to animate on the end of the, the stars animation. We start a new animation that goes from stars to at and does that same thing. So since we know where all the positions are of all of these things, it's just a constant animation of, of a few dozen animations um, that connect there. So um, that's one of the things that you get with GreenSock is the ability to link animations together. Um, and now we're getting some more of that by default out of the browser. Um, and actually, let's go ahead and talk about um, this game. So there was a game that I um, played, uh, I don't know, a long time ago uh, on the Commodore 64 that was about letters falling and you pressed keys on the keyboard and if you press the right key before it fell to the ground, you got a point and if it reached the ground, you didn't do well. I, I don't remember the speci specifics, but you know, in trying to, to recreate this, you can imagine here we've got animations of random characters going from top to bottom, and if I type in the letters, um, I ca basically cancel the animation with, through an event, and on my cancel callback, I increase my score in the bottom right, which you may or may not be able to see. Um, but if I let the animation go all the way to the bottom and finish, in the bottom left, which are my lives, I, I slowly lose them. And so I've got four, three, two, one. And so these are just animations that are falling. And by the time I've lost six or seven um, lives, um, I've made a game. So this is a game that uses animation that just kicks off every once in a while. It increases as you play. So by the time you get to like 100 points, they're going to be like just flooding the screen. And um, that's just through the basics of the Web Animations API with playback rate, setting an animation, and latching on to cancel events and finish events. Um, and so, as I was saying, this is like building, these are building blocks. And um, with, with a lot of the things that we just talked about, we can also increase the options we have for interacting with animation. So you can build like a timeline scrubber where, um, again, kind of in that flash world where you've got a visual representation of what's happening in your animation, you can play through it through um, scrubbing. So I can, here's five different elements that are five different things that are five different animations and they tie together. Um, and as I move this timeline, I can see the animation go through and then play back. So it's not just one animation timeline that I'm concerned about, it's five, and I can tie them all together because of the way that the animations are structured. Um, okay, so that's a large part of what's available today. And so, the obvious question is like, well, what are the catches? Um, the native browser support is, as we said, is still not 100%, um, but nothing really is ever 100%, um, at least not for some time. Um, there are some minor inconsistencies with CSS. Um, you can't do the same way that you style a keyframe. You can't use the same um, properties and keyframes. You can say 0% and 100% for the same set of rules. Here you have to be, you have to duplicate them. So there's some minor differences there. And, and the biggest thing in my mind is that there's still a lot that's coming. Um, and the more exciting stuff is coming. Like this kind of gets us on the same page as CSS. 
gives us a little bit of extra power, but some of the more fun stuff is, is coming. What else is coming? Let's go ahead and just take a look at the future slash it's actually now, but it's just not as, um, it's more in the nightly and the canary and the other dev browsers. Um, so there's this concept of getting all the animations. What we did earlier is I s took an animation, I saved it to a variable, and then I started performing actions on that, on that, um, on that element, on that, um, you know, my variable that represented my um, element that I was animating. Um, but if I don't actually store that to a variable, um, currently there's no way to act on it. But in Nightly and Canary versions, in Chrome, and all the other browsers that have this, and it's in Safari as well, there's a concept of get all animations. So you can call document.getAllAnimations or get animations, and um, you can act on them. So here's, a, here's one where we've got uh, yeah, 250 animations powered by the Web Animations API. Fairly smooth considering it's uh, that many animations. Um, but I didn't save any of them off, but I can say pause all, call document, get animations, iterate through them all, pause them, and similarly play them back. Um, so again, kind of a, a little thing, but it's, it's, it's a nice um, thing that's gonna be available to us. Um, motion path, this was, the one that, this was the one that got me into the Web Animations API in the first place, was the concept that I could actually Instead of just move something from here to here in a straight line, the, the promise of CSS motion path where I can just have a path as defined in SVG or something and animate along that path. Um, in practice, it's not been as useful as um, kind of perceived. You're very limited to pixels. Um, you can't kind of make it responsive, the, the path that you've got currently. But it is in Chrome. It's also in Firefox Nightly now. Um, and this gives us options like this. So I've got a blue element at the top of the screen that's gonna come back down. And for visualization, I've also got the path drawing, but when we're talking about motion path, the path isn't gonna actually be there. It's just this little blue item is following the path. I give it the vector definition of that path as you might find in SVG and um, tell it to go from 0% to 100% of that path. Um, I can change the path as it goes along too. So um, with that, it just keeps going. So this is what's really happening there is that path is going. And if we look at the, this is actually using a CSS animation, but again, it's um, um, the same thing here. So the anim animation is just saying, take it from offset z distance zero to 100%. And the browser does everything else. Um, this is one of those key areas where SVG was really strong in this, and now we can do it with any arbitrary element, or we can do it inside of our SVGs through CSS or through the Web Animations API in JavaScript. And then one of the things that I'm really excited about is the concept of composite timing option. So lots of CSS um, properties take multiple values, like transform. Um, transform, you can call scale, translate, rotate, lots of other options. And um, you can also do a list of them. So you can say scale and rotate. Um, and then if you try and do a second animation on that or some other state, it's gonna overwrite it because it's CSS and you set a new value, it's just gonna overwrite what was there. But with the composite property, it's actually saying, okay, I started with a scale and a rotate, and then when I say I wanna do an animation of um, a different scale, um, I'm just gonna add that on to the existing list. This is in Firefox Nightly, Chrome Canary, Safari Tech Preview. It hasn't landed in the, the true browser, the, the non-dev browsers yet. Um, and this is also one of those things where this is coming to the Web Animations API first, meaning the JavaScript portion, but there's also talk about getting it into CSS. You know, one of the options they were saying is kind of like we have um, exclamation point important and yes, I just said exclamation point. Um, and we could also have that same concept, but add or some other composite option. And so um, this one is probably easier to see in action as well. Oh, well, I've already done it there. Let's refresh that page and see if that works. Okay, 
So I've got a star. Nothing happening on it. And then I have this button that says add random transformation. So this is gonna do an animation, a random animation. And this one's a rotate Z of zero degrees to 308 degrees. Um, and so kind of up here, um, you can see that it's at the start and at the end, and that's just iterating infinitely. And I can start to add other things like a skew or a different skew or a rotate X um, in a third dimension, uh, translate, and just keep adding different animations. And now, um, these are all just adding to each other. I've now got a list of, uh, I can't count that fast, but 20 um, animations on the same property of a transform, and they're all just working independently and being able to adapt as we go. And you can even pause different ones, and you know, we get a lot of options for smoothness, um, which is exciting. And there's this concept of bending animations. So again, I was talking about how animation by default, especially if you're just talking about a start and an end state, you're talking about um, linear motion. So if I click on a screen, I can go to a different place and it just goes in a straight line. But now, based on the actions that I'm taking, I can click in multiple places and get kind of a circular animation. That's, it's the animation's being bent on the fly based on where I'm clicking. Whereas in the past, this would be very much a, okay, I'm animating to here. Oh, they clicked somewhere else. Okay, well, now I just got to go in a straight line there. But because we're adding different functionality, um, adding different transforms on the fly, they just kind of bend in the way that they're going into a nice smooth curve. So there's a lot of possibilities in this realm. Um, and so it's gonna be exciting to see these be promoted up to the full browsers. Um, and then we've got a couple more here where um, we've been talking about the JavaScript side, but it's also going to be um, available to CSS. So um, with, through that document.getAnimations that's coming, you're not gonna be able to just get the JavaScript animations you started, you're gonna be able to get the CSS animations, the CSS transitions, and then after that, the SVG animations. Um, and they'll all be returned, you'll be able to tell which ones are CSS, which ones came from JavaScript if you need to do that. So that means that all of the things with playback rate and all the things that aren't available in CSS today, you actually will have access to um, on your animation. So if you wanna keep doing CSS animations, that's great. You are still gonna get a little bit more power through the what's available in the web animations API. And so here's a here's another one where this is a C these are CSS animated elements um, flying through space. Um, and again, now I have my playback rate, which um, all I'm doing here is I'm taking a CSS animation that's defined in one way and changing the playback rate here at the bottom to go a little slower. Um, it's a CSS animation, but I get to have that extra power through what JavaScript uh, provides. And then there's Houdini, which if you haven't heard about Houdini, is one of those things that's kind of a mix between CSS and JavaScript in that a lot of it is implemented through JavaScript to augment what's available in CSS. Um, and this gives us a lot more powers to animate um, in CSS, specifically CSS variables. Um, so you can individualize um, your animations in kind of new ways. Um, I have demos for that one as well, but that one's more of the, you should, you should look into it if, you're, if you haven't yet already. Um, and then there's a few more things, like you can change the keyframes in the middle of an animation. You can group and sequence them um, through like specific ways that's coming in the next level of the specification. And there's even timelines that aren't related to time. I know. What does that even mean? It means like scrolling. So you can scroll through something and it'll animate based on the scroll time. Uh, or not the time, but as you scroll, that's you're moving through your timeline. Um, so, so we've talked kind of about the, the overall what's possible with the web animations API. Um, in my usage, a, a lot of it comes through um, like why, why would I use Web Animations API over CSS? I think it's, um, it's good for randomized values. Um, you're already kind of doing that in JavaScript, so just kind of keep everything in there. 
um, if you're modifying keyframes. So I, I've done work in the past where they needed like some specific springs and taking in the functions of uh, what are all the things in springs, tension and those sciency things and um, boiling them down to functions, generating keyframes on that. Um, my first iteration like generated a bunch of CSS keyframes and then pushed that, but with the WebM Animations API, just take those values that those functions return and kick off an animation directly in, um, in, the, in the API. Uh, if you're already using CSS animation and you're toggling a lot of classes today, then maybe you just do it in, um, in JavaScript. Um, if you're needing to sequence things, especially more than a few things, um, like with that uh, sing-along, that's a lot of things to tie together if you wanna make sure that they stay consistent and um, changing one value doesn't break all the other ones, JavaScript might be a better way. And if you're already integrating with JS frameworks, like they often have hooks into different things like um, the different transition events in Vue and, and other things in React. Um, you know, you're already there this is also available to you. Um, so, you know, we, we talked a lot, and so have we finally done it? Have we given everything we need for animation? And I think we all know the answer is, um, is no. Like, this is very foundational stuff. It, we had awesome stuff with um, JavaScript letting us move things back in the day, and we had a lot of power with CSS to make things a little bit more performance-based and um, declarative. And now we've got a few more powers built on top of that. Um, hopefully this means that libraries like GreenSock can continue to innovate and push further. A lot of the things that have landed in here like, came from libraries like that. Um, just like we have document.query selector because of jQuery. Like, as these other libraries build things, they get funneled back down to the browser and that's good because that allows them, that frees them up to do more and that gives more power to individual users to choose whether they wanna use libraries or um, do things in JS or CSS or SVG, and do it in a way that's more consistent than has been in the past. So if you want to know more, there's um, MDN, of course, um, um, headed up originally by the, the efforts of Rachel Neighbors. Um, there's the Slack Animation at Work um, Slack group, which uh, is a lot of fun and has a lot of people who work on the web animations API spec. Um, so they're always available to ask questions when things are coming and um, really a, a great resource there. UI animation newsletter from Val Head. You know, we didn't talk about the why. Um, I think Val is one of those people who um, can really like hit the point home as to like why to animate. Um, and then there's several episodes of Shop Talk Show, especially like early on in the web animations days. Um, these episodes were in there. And um, there's articles that, um, that you can search for. And they were a little early, but thank you very much, um, CodePen, Twitter, and Slides. Um, I think we have a couple minutes, so I will go ahead and open the floor up um, to a question or two, if there are any. And there's also, it's also fine if there's not. Yes? Uh, so you mentioned with the Mm -hmm. Would those, I guess, multiply onto each other? Or would they replace the previous scale animation that's out there? Uh, they will, they, it'll be multiple. Um, so the question was, um, with the, that composite thing where I'm you know, adding different pieces of a transform on top of each other, um, like what's really happening there, it's, it's really, if there's five scales in there, then all the scales are gonna be applied. Um, the fun thing about the transform is that like, it, it's all boils down to linear algebra and matrix multiplication and all that fun stuff. And um, each one does it. So like the very first one you have in the list, it changes the coordinate system. So if you scale it, then um, everything after that's gonna be at that scale. And then if you scale again, then you just kind of <coughs> compounded that. And if you add the rotation, then everything after that's gonna also have that rotation. And um, yeah, so it, it's, if you have 30 scales in a row, It'll do whatever that math ends up being. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day here at Thunder Plains. <laughs>